Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's natural, supernatural. I wouldn't want it any other way. A few years ago, a top man of God had a revelation from God that there were thousands and thousands of demons, evil spirits, that were released on planet Earth that had never been here before to cause the institution of marriage to be destroyed, to cause sexual immorality. Well, we know what's happened over the last few years. What you have in your home, on the internet, on television, on, on the smartphones, uh, it seems as though pornography is epidemic. It, it seems as though the, er, the institution of marriage is under the worst assault. It seems as though divorce is cheap. But my guest has been given a supernatural, proactive way to maintain the purity, the sexual purity of your family, of your house, and if any have fallen to the addiction of things like pornography, they can be free because he has a supernatural way of setting you free. You know, I am absolutely blown away by the statistics that Doug Weiss has told me. Uh, Dr. Weiss, Tell me those statistics again about pornography and people addicted to it. I mean, billions of dollars are, are being spent uh, regularly on pornography in, in, on a monthly basis. America's number one in producing pornography. The average age of looking at pornography has dropped down to under 11 to 9. To, I mean, we are in a battle. The enemy has declared, you talked about a spiritual battle being released on earth. Pornography is that battle. And if, if we don't wake up, we can get eaten by it. And it's not just the people out there in the culture and the TV and all that. It's also, like you said, the cell phones in Christian homes. I mean, Sid, I, I talk to Christian schools. I say, how many of you kids have a porn blocker at home? Only about 5 or 10%. That means 80, 90% of Christian homes are having porn poured into their cell phones and their computers. It's crazy. It, it, it's epidemic. Uh, and here's what I've found. God has a plan for your life, mm -hmm. and the devil wants to abort it. Doug, God had a wonderful plan for your life. Mm -hmm. you, won't, uh, you, you were supposed to be knocked down to, for a 10 count. Tell me briefly what, uh, your story. My story, I was conceived in adultery. Uh, that, uh, my mom got divorced, married an alcoholic. They got divorced. I was put in foster homes. I was sexually abused. I was abandoned. And... I accepted Christ when I was probably uh, about 12 years old, Salvation Army, but a group in the world, alcohol, alcoholism, drug addiction, acting out immorally constantly. I came to the end of my rope, Sid, and I said, I said, in a camp, there was no speaking, no, no choir, nothing. I said, Jesus, I know you're God, kind I of, like I get God. that. So here's the I deal. Want I want to die tonight. But I will give you 30 days. I'll do 100% of what you tell me to do to, be, to make it fair. And at the end of 30 days, if my life is not different, I will die then. Well, that was over 30 years ago. My life has been supernatural ever since, and the enemy has been okay, losing when, battles constantly. When you say you will die, you're talking about you were going to commit suicide. Oh, I was going to kill myself, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was sensing drinking and drugging and, and having sex with all kinds of people all the time. 
I, I couldn't see that for okay. 60 years okay. of my life. So, so, so you're, you're a real sport. He gives God 30 days. What happened, <laughs> at the, what, what happened at the end of 30 days? Well, you know, amazingly, um, a, a pastor came into my life, and uh, I was in Bible school about a couple months after that, four, uh, four years of that. Then he put me in seminary. I mean, God just supernaturally put oh, me in my but life. Wait, 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 wait. You were addicted to alcohol, to alcohol drugs, drugs. That left. Pornography. Alcohol and drugs left. Now, the pornography Instantly? thing... Alcohol and drugs left instantly, wow. supernaturally gone, okay? Now, the pornography thing and the sexual addiction stuff, that stayed in my life for f several years in Bible school until I started to use some of the principles I teach in seminary. And but, then I started to get free from the pornography. And but, that's supernatural, too. I'm clean 25 years. Uh, but here's the thing that is so amazing. If God had taken away all three of these addictions instantly... Doug wouldn't be seated here right now. Doug would not be responsible for thousands of people getting free from addictions of all kinds because God showed him step by step supernaturally how he could be free, and now he teaches us to others. Uh, give me an example of someone like that got trapped. Joe, oh, I can, tell, yeah. me, tell me about Joe. Thousands of examples of people who see me from all over, but uh, Joe's a situation where he had a secret life, he cheated on his wife, got caught, she forgave him. But you've got to get help. Not the end of the story. He began to go into pornography, and he was attracted to a certain type of hair color. And then that kind of person shows up at his work, where he's the boss, he engages in another affair, that woman turns around and sues him for malpractice, almost destroying not only his marriage, but his business. See, you can't have a secret. That's one of the rules. You can't have a secret and be successful with this thing. It seems as though these secret sins, it's, it's sort of like a, a time bomb. It and it will bomb. go off at some time. And you get away with these secret sins but you're really not getting away with it. You're just being set up, but there is freedom. However, there's a couple of words that I want you to think about that is the problem in many of your lives. You do not have a healthy fear of God. I'll be right mm. back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Our world is rife with comparisons about what separates us. Day after day, we go about our lives with tunnel vision. But scripture tells us how Messiah broke down the wall between Jew and Gentile, allowing for the creation of one new man, one new humanity. This spiritual completeness is set to usher in the greatest move toward God the world has ever known. Sid Roth has discovered scripture's key to reaching the Jewish people with God's love. One New Humanity opens the door for God to move in signs and wonders, and all will see the evidence of the invisible God promised in Scripture. At SidRoth.org, you'll find mentoring tools to empower you to share how One New Humanity is critical to bringing multitudes to know God. You'll understand Israel and the Jewish roots of the church, and how all the nations of the earth will experience blessings unseen in human history. Log on to SidRoth.org today and learn how one new man is the key to unlocking God's greatest blessings. We now return to It's Supernatural. I am so excited about what's going to happen when you are pure and you are clean, and the changes that are going to happen in your marriage, in your family, in your community. But I am uh, equally amazed at the research uh, the, that you have, Dr. Weiss, on the brain. Tell me mm. some of the things you found out. You know, you think uh, this is new, but thousands of years ago, it says that when we sin sexually, we sin against our own body. But I couldn't have a theology professor or a philosophy professor explain that to me. Now, when I became a researcher in the field of sexuality, what happens is when we have a sexual encounter, we get the highest level of endorphins and enkephalins. These are brain chemicals. Hits the excitement center of the brain, and boom, you literally attach and glue to whatever you're looking at whether it's real or imaginary. So, so many of these uh, teenagers at home looking at pornography are setting themselves up for failure later. Um, you can attach to certain things. Like I know a guy, when he was a boy, he attached to, you know, brunette, certain body type, and that's what he did. And he married someone not like that, right? Well, one day he's at work, 
and a girl exactly like that walks into his life. So, so you're saying the brain can't distinguish between fantasy on the computer, the imagining, ma imagination, and the real life situation. Right. So he, it was a time bomb. It was bang. Well, you know, and so he instantly was attracted to her and instantly had an affair within a couple of weeks with her. Okay, because she capitalized on his neurochemical reinforcement towards her. You know, ring the bell, feed the dog. Okay, so it's what, when he saw her, he salivated. You know, that's why your husband's kind of doing this when he looks at, you know, that kind of thing, right? And so, now he's been clean for now 15 years or so. All right, so there's your ceiling and there's hope. But we can actually prevent this stuff. There are teaching of, that we can help our young men and men get involved, get in the war. This is a war, and every man needs to be a battle. Every, every, every wife needs to be asking the questions and helping her sons. This is time to do war back so that we don't have these problems 30 years down the road. Now, you used a phrase that I've used since then that, mm -hmm. that I love, and that is every husband that I'm talking to right now, you have a different father-in-law than you think. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you who your father-in-law is. God is your father-in-law. Mm -hmm. You better watch what you do to your wife. Yes. That is oh. powerful. Oh, yeah. Marriage is three people. It's, it's, it's you, your spouse, and God. Even Christians define marriage between man and woman. That's, un, that's unbiblical, and it's not supernatural. Supernatural is God, a man, and a woman. Now, that marriage, that triunity, that trinity on earth that is, is, in, is in heaven is power, but it needs to have purity. Okay. okay. When, when, when a family is walking in purity, mm -hmm. and you talked earlier about the secret sins that yes. no one knows, but when a family is walking in purity, what changes usually occur in that family? Well, in that family, there's going to be an environment where there's, there's no secrets, there's going to be honesty, you can be flawed and loved, you can be celebrated and cared for, okay, but, and they're going to be mature. What happens is, Sid, when someone gets into this kind of sexual sin, it, it robs them of emotional, spiritual, and moral development. That's why you have people who are like men of God going down and seeing prostitutes. Like, how do they get there? Because the moral and spiritual development erodes when the sexual sin comes into your life. And it robs you of the ability to make some of those choices clearly. I, I'm reminded of the scripture, a little leaven. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it leavened the whole loaf. A little bit of sin. You get away with it. You think no one knows. It's your little secret. You don't want... What, so what, what would you say to a man that's watching us right now mm -hmm. and they're saying, well, that's me. I do it. But I can't tell my wife these secrets mm -hmm. because if I do, she might leave. Well, what I would say to you, sir, is I love you. I've been there reading my Bible and having a sexual sin. I know your pain and you don't believe you're lovable. Go find a man and get accountable. Tell somebody, get out of your secret world. You deserve a clean heart and a clean life, but you will not get it by just talking to Jesus. You're going to have to talk to another man and get free. That's what I would tell him. And he can get free. He really can. Now, you found this out when you were struggling with yeah. your, your, your sin. <laughs> yes. and, I mean, I had a supernatural going Bible, thing happen. Going to Bible school yeah. and, and struggling with yeah, pornography. Uh, but the, the statistics say that so many ministers are struggling yeah, with pornography. Yeah, because ministers are men and, and they're chained by the world sexually. But here's what happened to me I had a supernatural encounter. The Lord, I was in seminary, and the Lord said, I want you to tell your roommate every time you sin sexually. Jesus? I'm like, Jesus, are you crazy? Really? But what was my deal? A hundred percent of what you tell me to do. I said, okay. So I talked to him. I said, you know, because he knew I heard from the Lord. I said, God told me if I, if I act out sexually with myself or pornography or anything, and he'd tell you. He was like, whatever. Okay. I mean, the first time I told him, I felt really bad. The second time I told him, I felt so bad. Because now I was, I was, the humility of that was starting to heal me. And I started to get free, Sid. I mean, I take a polygraph to verify I haven't had any sexual behavior with myself, pornography, or others in over 25 years. So, if God could set Doug free, I mean, coming from an illicit affair, uh, he, he didn't go into detail, shuffled around with foster parents, uh, at a young age being given a book uh, that's pornographic, uh, a want, suicidal. If God could set Doug free, God will set you free. Give me one more tip besides accountability uh, that, uh, that people can hang on to. 
Well, I think, first of all, you want to be accountable, but that's an ongoing process. That's why I'm encouraging you know, churches to get in, involved in, in helping guys talk to each other. Let this be an open conversation. Instead of the rules of engagement being don't ask, don't tell, mm -hmm. I say switch the rules. Ask and tell, <laughs> and we can be free. You know, wouldn't it be wonderful for you to be free? I mean, yes, God forgives you, but once you... You know, your wife, your husband, because it works both ways, you know. Mm -hmm. They may not know what you're doing, but they feel it. Mm -hmm. they, they sense mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Let's get that wall down. Let's mm -hmm. get free. Amen. Let's accomplish our destiny. Yes. We'll be right back. <laughs> Amen. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. I'm 14 years old. This morning, I watched It's Supernatural about angels and warmth poured on me. It made me cry. God healed me of stage four inoperable cancer. It is a real blessing to have It's Supernatural to watch each week. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at SidRoth.org forward slash praise. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hi, Sid Roth here with Doug Weiss. And, uh, Dr. Weiss, there are so many people that are addicted to things mm. like pornography, and they seem as though they're stuck. Yes, yes. And why are they so stuck? Well, Westerners like to like, talk to Jesus, but not talk to, or talk to God, but they don't want to talk to another person because of pride. Okay, <laughs> right? James says, if we confess our faults, Jesus will forgive us and cleanse us. But in James 5.16, it says, if I, if I confess my faults to my brother, to another, then I may be healed and my prayers will be effective. Ah, right? So difference. I can be forgiven, but not healed. That's why they're stuck. They're forgiven, but not healed. They're using that verse backwards. If Doug keeps his secrets to himself, he's guaranteed to stay sick and his prayers will be ineffective. That's what they're working, so well, they're stuck. Well, well, you know, someone heard Doug's teaching, and he's an usher in a church, and he, he said, I'm going to do something about it. Tell me about that. Well, usher. he got tired of men being stuck because he was hearing about it. So when I came, I did a men's conference, and he said, I'm going to start talking to guys. So he knew all the guys in church. He would grab them by the hand and hold their hand, Sid, and he would say, when was the last time you were uh, inappropriate with yourself or inappropriate with images? He'd look them right in the eye, and if the guy... Did that look down? He'd say, okay, we're going to talk, gonna about, talk it. about it. And, and if it's real serious, it's there's a group you can go serious. to. You're going to huddle up. I am not going to stay you watching join. you stay sick Talk anymore. He was just tired of it in his church. And just one guy changed so many men's lives because he changed the rules of engagement. I'm going to ask, and they're going to tell me. And he was old enough that he could get away with it. It was great. <laughs> we, we handled a little bit of this, but tell me some practical steps. Uh, that men can do? Sure, real practical, like getting rid of some of the thought lives, the lust, right? Get a rubber band, put it on your wrist. Anytime you lust or scan a woman, snap it. That it, hurts. It hurts. Yeah. Or ring the bell, <laughs> spank the dog, right? Pavlov. Yeah. Okay. 80% <laughs> of your lust life will shut down in one month, okay? You know, get the porn blocker on your, on your cell phone, on your computer. Stop that stuff from going on. Um, if you're engaged in any kind of inappropriate uh, texting or Facebooking, shut those things off. Most of us don't need social media. We just don't need it. Shut those things off if they're dangerous for you. And women need to get engaged by asking the intelligent questions and making sure the porn blocker's on and making sure that your husband is actually taking some responsibility for his son's sexual development. And there's, there's lots of teaching on that, that any guy can become an expert, even though his dad failed him like my dad's failed me. Tell me about a real-life person. Tell me about Dwayne. And Dwayne's a sad case because... Dwayne kind of was like me. He had, a, he had a pornography problem, but he had a secret, right? Met a good Christian girl, married her, but never told her. I, I, I've heard the phrase, our secrets make us crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. secrets definitely true? make you sick. But they show up. First, first lust, then sin, then death. They show up. Mm. So what happens is he kept it a secret. Then, then he's, he meets somebody. He has an affair. Okay, now he's a successful business guy at this point. This is 15 years into the marriage, right? has an affair, gets the girl pregnant. Mm -hmm. Now he not only has to tell his wife he had an affair, now he has another child. Something a little more than 
See, he didn't have to have that happen. No man needs to have that happen who's listening to us. No woman married to a man needs to have this happen to him. If they clean up first, they don't have to go through this process. But if we don't clean up, what happens is then our sin will eventually expose us because God loves us. And he wants us to have a supernatural clean life in which these things are not part of our life. These consequences are not happening. And I hope we're preventing some of that today. Uh, you, you talk about in the last days, these Jezebel spirits mm -hmm. will be raised up. Explain. Well, th that's already all over the world. And it basically says, no matter what your spiritual belief, you can be sexually immoral. That sex and spirituality are separated. That's not true. That's a lie. And what happens when you believe that lie, you start getting seduced. And once you get seduced, your destiny gets reduced. Does that make sense? So if the enemy can seduce you, he can reduce you. I mean, do you realize that one indiscretion will, could possibly ruin your entire life? Mm -hmm. So some of you already know this the hard way. But if you are battling right now, right at this moment, there's so many wonderful steps mm. that you can take, but they're not just psychological steps. Mm -hmm. They are supernatural steps. For instance, mm -hmm. you at this point, how many years have you been free? Over 25 years, Sid. Okay, but every morning you mm. say a prayer. Yes. I would, I would like, would you like to know the prayer that Doug himself says? every single morning? I'd like to hear that. Yeah, when I wake up, uh, I'll say, Lord, I hate the lust of all women. I command my mind, my will, and my emotions to instantly and reflectively cast them down. Lord, I am a thousand percent satisfied with my wife, my family, my life, and business. And I just declare those things because, I mean, gosh, you can't drive anywhere or be anywhere where things can't hit you. But I've already made a commitment before I hit the floor that I'm going to cast that thing down because it's not going to take my destiny. My destiny is to set the nations free, and that's mine. And God gave it, and God wants to see it happen. Amen? So every man has a destiny. Every woman has a destiny. But like the people in Israel, we have to fight for our promised land. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I, I understand that. Uh, where's the fear of God in this? I don't understand yes. how a man, I understand how a man could be addicted. Mm. But I don't understand how a man would not do everything possible to be free if they know God. But it's people just don't do it. Why? Well, sometimes they don't know how to do it like I did. I did not know. I was quoting scripture, memorizing, fasting, and praying. That's what I knew, but it wasn't enough. I didn't know to confess my faults. Now, when God told me to, I started to do that. Okay. What so should sometimes someone, it's principles someone watching right now, they have their secret sin. Mm. What can they do about it as far as accountability? What would you recommend? Who go, should they go to? Go to your spiritual leader. That's what they're there for. And you know what? They've heard it before. I mean, since the Internet, they hear it almost every day. I mean, Sid, so many pastors call me and say, you know, uh, a friend of mine or someone in my congregation or one of my people on staff, they're struggling. Doug, can we send them to you? And we say, sure. You know, it's great. And, and they get well and they get free. And what's happened, what's really exciting, Sid, is when this man or woman gets clean and free, their incomes can often double, their ministries return back to their life, their destinies are, are taken up, and here's what's also exciting. I had a couple who uh, flew in from Canada because we do intensives in, in my office, and their children's destiny have been relit. Well, you know what, you know what I I'm believe, saying? That's you know, the exciting. Bible talks about generational sin. Yes. You, in other words, uh, you're not just protecting yourself. You're not just protecting your, your marriage. You're protecting your children, your grandchildren, mm -hmm. your great-grandchildren, your great-great-grandchildren, and the gifts and calling of God are without repentance, which means wherever you're at, you will not miss your destiny, but stop now. Right now. Amen. Well, l let me tell you one other thing. I don't understand people that willfully continue sinning after becoming believers. Why? Because when I became a believer, I had an encounter with mm. evil. I know the reality of the dark side, of the demonic, of the devil. And I wouldn't want to play footsie with the devil for all the money in the world. Where is the healthy fear of the living God? Amen. This is what the Bible says. Those that die, Daniel says, 
Some will rise to everlasting life, that's with God, and others to everlasting condemnation. Why will you die, O house of Israel? Choose life. Yes. Repent of your sins. Believe the blood of Jesus washes it yes, away. Yes, does. And make Jesus Lord of your life. Yes. Say it with your mouth right now. Get right with God now. Yes. Yes, Lord. Next week on It's Supernatural. Why, throughout every generation, is the Jew persecuted wherever we go, wherever we live? Now, I can understand why that occurred before the Messiah of Israel came, because it was from the seed of a Jew that the Messiah would come. But why after? I know why. And I say this to you. You will not understand end times. You will not understand end times unless you understand the Jew, Israel, and the one new man. And I tell you one more thing. As I share this significant end time word, healing is going to flow like a river.